أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters We begin today with the dua اللهم إنا أسألك علما نافيا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا والله I ask you for knowledge that is beneficial. I ask you for provision that is good and pure. And I ask you for deeds that are accepted. As we complete the 19th day of Ramadan in the year 1441, we continue with Ramadan reminders and the tafsir of Surah Al-Nas here at the Devi Mosque. And as such, we will be discussing the only Madani Surah of the last 10 chapters of Al-Quran the chapter of divine support, or help. Since we are in the penultimate day of the middle stage of the month, then only today and tomorrow remains the days of forgiveness. So we shall now recite the recommended dua for these days of forgiveness. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhambi wa atubu ilayh. I ask forgiveness of my sins from Allah, who is my Lord, and I turn towards him. The eternal message that was delivered to mankind started with Adam alayhi salam, peace be upon him, which is a means of respect for the messengers. The message from time immemorial is that there is only one God, La ilaha illallah, and that man is a khalifa, a representative of Allah on earth. And the message came down piece by piece to man via wahi, or inspiration, and by malaikas, or angels, and by kitab, the books, which we know as the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, and finally the Quran. And finally, to complete the eternal message, there is a great personality to come, and he has arrived. That is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which completes the message. Which means there is no need for another messenger. And this message was perfectly defined in the article of faith, which says, "Believe in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers." and in the last day, and in the fact that everything, good or bad, is decided by Allah, the Almighty, and in the life after death. Imagine a message that took many centuries to deliver completely had now got its final perfect chapter, the chapter of Divine Support, delivered in its final perfect book, Al-Quran. At that time, Many of the Muhajirun, those who migrated from Makkah to Medina because of oppression, finally came back home. The Kaaba became free of idols. The Muslims were facing their own Qibla, the direction of prayer, not Jerusalem anymore, but the Kaaba. Re-establishment of Abraham's religion belief in the one unseen God who has no partners and free from khauf, free from fear to perform the Hajj and Umrah. So Allah begins his statement Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ida jaa nasrullahi wal fat Ida when ja comes Nasrullahi, the divine support from Allah, and al fat and the victory. Just look at a local connotation. al fat means victory. So it is normally purported that the name of the first boat to bring immigrants to Trinidad from India was the Fat al razak when it was actually the Fat ul razak the victory of Razak. So what does this first ayah mean? When comes the help of Allah and comes the victory? 
doesn't it actually mean completion of the religion? Well, most Sahabas at that point in time thought so. But a young Ibn Abbas was asked of his interpretation of it by Umar ibn al khattab And he said, This surah was a sign from God to Muhammad indicating the approach of the end of his life. Meaning, when the victory from God and the conquest come, your end is near. So extol the praises of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. To which Umar ibn al khattab agreed. Allah then speaks about the future in the second ayah, where he says, And you see the people entering the religion of Allah in multitudes. So the Arab Peninsula, which was waiting to see the outcome, and now accepted that the Muslims could only have gained victory over the Makans with a nas with divine support. The people then came in droves, accepting the message which had taken 23 years to deliver on the part of Muhammad Allah concludes the surah with فَسَبِّهْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Then glorify your Lord with his praises and ask his forgiveness. This third and final ayah means that God allowed people to join Islam and gave them a second chance no matter how harsh their crimes were because God is regarded as the Ya Ghaffar, the forgiving one, and Ya Rahman, the entirely merciful. After that, the Prophet would frequently repeat the words Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, glory and praise be to God, and he would also repeat Astaghfirullah wa tubu I seek forgiveness from God and I repent to him. Allah completes the final chapter by informing of the completion of the Nabi's life and with an important lesson. Success is attained only with Nasrullah, with Allah's help and divine support. Accept it with humility and ihsan, best behavior, when it comes. As Muhammad entered the city with his head bowed, remembering Allah, just as we can see similar behavior portrayed by other prophets, such as Prophet Yusuf and Prophet Sulaiman in other parts of the Quran, being careful to avoid the pride that might have built up in their hearts. Then glorify Allah and seek forgiveness. Allah perfects what our behavior should be when he says in Quran in Surah Munafikun, the hypocrites, chapter 63, verse 9. O you believers, let not your children nor your wealth divert you from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does that, then they are the losers. Tomorrow, inshallah, as we continue Ramadan reminders, we shall be going on to Surah Al-Masad, chapter 111. It will also bring to the end the second stage of Ramadan, the second 10 days, the days of forgiveness. We will now end with the dua. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Our Lord, accept this service from us. Indeed, you are the hearer, the knower. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.